On this coaching video, we have a gold cane versus a gold Shivana, but the cane has 4.9 CS per minute, has won multiple games playing Rast with this level of farming. What's he doing right and what's he doing very wrong? Let's have a look. We just had a main channel video on Kane as well, featuring the Charismite basically doing what he does to master players. But, you know, if he can do it to master players, you can do it to gold players. So, the reason we're in this situation is we have a cheeky invade up into the blue side. Well, the blue team side on the red side. And, you know, again, I don't understand this. Ward, protect, do your game plan. If you want to cheese this kind of stuff, go for it. If you want to do this, smite this, run away, do it. But again, like, what's the end game to your play? It's better off, you're better off just starting here. Not, like, the, the Gwen wards this in this spot right here. To what purpose? Right? Because is the Shivana going to be stealing your stuff with a leash? <laughs> it's not going to happen. So that ward is useless from the Gwen's perspective. This is who you have to protect as a jungler, right? This is what you have to think about. And again, this ward over here as well, it's just all a waste of vision. So now the Shivana is going to do what she does, full clear, just like we are, there we go. Crossing faster than us because we're doing blue side instead of red side, but we're still kind of parallel. And no one has any vision across the river. And as always, please consider having a look at my jungle courses on my website, as well as joining us in the private jungle discord to have access not only to the free jungle improvement PDF, but also weekly coaching classes, lectures, Q and A's, and so much more in addition to all of the jungle video courses included with it. The absolute jungle paradise for all junglers is Rikaiu.gg. We see this, Kane's not invading, and uh, we see this. Shivana's not invading. So it's a lot of wasted vision control, and that's really what happens as you have this gold to platinum sort of MMR range. People don't think very deeply about why and when they should actually do things. They just do things. So already on the offset for your game planning and for your vision control, just ask yourself why, what does the enemy jungler want to do, and when would my wards best be placed to stop that. Now, if a Shivana randomly walks in here and smites it away, you know what, that's just absolutely random, and it shouldn't happen, right? Your clear should be better, and of course you should be down this side, anyway. And you see the ping, MIA ping from the blue team. Did you see that? Look at this. Right? We've got the MIA ping here from the Ash. Hold up. There we go. Obviously now she doesn't have E second, which she probably should for tracking because it's, it's pretty useless in this particular spot. But you know, it is what it is. You see pings right there on the map. So, why? who's pinging this? Is this the Shivana? Did she not even pay attention to where the cane started? Most likely not. And it sounds like a very basic thing, and most of you say, well, okay, I do that. Do you, though, every game? Just make sure you are. Ash and Blitzcrank cheese a little bit, get some kills. Kane's gonna finish his full clear here. We have the Volibear shoving in the Gwen. Okay, matchup. You know, for Volley, if I'm ahead, I'll be happily dealing with the Gwen until a bit later when she does Gwen things. So now, we know the Shivana most likely starts here and goes up. We start here and go up. Shivana's on the river. We see the top lane fisting. And the crab is going to be lost to time because our clear was in the wrong direction, very, very slow. And here we're going to save our W. This is all orb gathering. We don't want to waste our flash, obviously. We do want red form. That's what this guy plays. Oof. But also, you know, Volibear, Shivana, you got the Thresh. Well, <laughs> you know, it's still good. Then Nika will be irritating, but she goes in. So our W will be okay. If she roots us as Blue King, we're dead anyway. And obviously Ash is an issue, but we have Smite for that, as well as other sort of itemization choices we can go for. Like Cleavers do help just a little bit. Now, the whole point of this spiel in the first phase is like, why are you starting Blue Side in the first place? Do we want, really want to gank the Volibear and Gwen? You know, Gwen doesn't have CC, right? Uh, we don't have CC, but a slow, which is fine, but this is not really the lane I want to be ganking. I'd much rather let the Shivana go up, we path down, I have access to this play. Because you see these plays all the time, and again, I've just said on Twitter, I always like to coach roots like a motion offense of basketball, right? Where you always have different decisions and each thing's an independent variable. So basically what you're looking at is, right, I'm going to do my red side quadrant. One of the options is, yeah, I can keep full clear, right? I can full clear, get this gutter crab, cool, reset, do it again. However, if I can do this in mid lane is gankable based upon my matchup knowledge and obviously using my eyes to look, I can flex and gank that. Right? I could also loop back and gank this, but I feel like if you want to gank top lane as Kane, and this is explicitly the lane you want to gank for orbs of form, and you know the enemy jungle starts here, Raptors, Red, Krugs, gank, base, straight down to the blue side to protect, cover, say, uh, snack it up, the enemy jungle is not gonna, you know, they're gonna finish their cross time, you're 2.30, by the time you show up and get this kill, it's too late for them to vertical anyway, you're fine, right? You're absolutely fine, just make sure you push this wave out, you know? Alternatively, you do the red side, that's not an option, that's not an option, full clear is still an option, but you see this bottom lane action. Cut, 
cut down and get it done. So you don't have to full clear by default, you know, especially as Kane, people think you have to, you really don't. The red side quadrant is super strong for you. And now, obviously, we're doing the outside and rule into the Scuttle Crab, which I kind of like because you know that the Shivana will go back to base after doing Scuttle, like you did there. And you want to make sure that uh, you snack this before she shows up. Where is she? Coming around the wall just to say, hello, I'm here for the Scuttle. And that's why we like the outside in rule. Take the thing furthest away from the your side of the jungle and then fall back to your side of the jungle. Because you get it now. And now you can fall back to Grump Wolves. But if you did... Grump first, you would lose it, because she took it first, now she falls back here, now to get it you have to trail her, they collapse and you die. So the outside in rule allows you to snack this thing furthest from your house, your nexus, dragons, scuttles, enemy reds, whatever, and then fall back nicely into this zone, right? So that's great. Now also what the, um, you know, red team needs to realize is that Blitzcrank is solo pushing first the ash, the Shivana sees this, and Kane just runs away, he doesn't see it at all. Jinx is coming back into the lane, and, and you know, the king could show a bit more awareness to these things. So, 100%, a reason why players like this have less kills, less assists, lower KPs, lower CSPMs, is because he's stuck in his moment of stealing the scuttle crab and leaving for Grump. He doesn't recognize the bottom lane situation or look to exploit it in any way. And now he goes back here while the Blitzcrank is going to go back to base, leaving the Jinx by herself. That's not your responsibility. As soon as you see Shivana here and we have prior to collapse and do something, we can get our orbs, boom, you're out, boom, 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 again. No hesitation. So, the waste of time here means he wastes time rotating later, which means he wastes time over here, which means now he's way behind. So, Shivana's gonna finish her Krugs, and probably because Blitzcrank went back to base, look to maybe do a dragon, look to go invading, but now, what is this? What We should be long gone, right? We see this, we have the hit. What's Shivana doing? Why is Shivana doing this? Again, both junglers, are the, they're the same archetype, right? Once the action's done, boof, 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 Shivana should be here already. Now, knowing she has this advantage over the cane, could b go straight back to base and now go straight for this dragon. Yeah? And she could go around the top side, pull it out with E, it will arrive, she can do it, and Kane will be top side on this. So both junglers have these options available to them, if you follow my drift. Now, this is why these people have lower CSPMs because they waste this time between their sequences. No one should be finishing their second full sequence at 6.30 with 0, 0, 0, right? And Chavon in the meantime here is looping back around, absolutely obsessed with this bottom lane, instead of just full sequencing, which means that Kane gets his benefit of going top lane. Now, it's good that the flash is burned. Now, Gwen does have the slows, but it's still a volleyball and it's still a tough one to do. If you see... Okay... Ah, where we go. <laughs> if you see the Shivana, I was like, where, where did she go? If you see the Shivana, because, yeah, you see what I'm seeing with the replay glitch? If she shows bot lane here and goes in for this, right, with flash, obviously. Oh, I don't know why the Blitzcrank turns, because that's a free kill. You, know, you should already be on her Grump Wolves. Like, because you didn't waste time bottom lane, you did the Grump Wolves Raptors Krugs, you ganked top lane maybe even before that Volibear hit six, but unlikely at this stage. Pull back down into her blue side and snack it up because you'll be tracking the CS. Because you know she's going to respawn and come top. You can get a Grump and get out. Easily. Because that's what we're looking to do. Take the Grump, get out, go down and try and get this. But I would not be surprised if the Shivana in this MMR range spawns and goes for this, this, and this. Because they're obsessed with it. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't go for the counter jungling, right? Because she has no Krugs and no Raptors on the map. Which means her going bottom side there is great, but it makes no sense. Because all she's going for is this red and hoping to fill the time before the Krugs. There we go. By doing other stuff. And of course, this is fine, right? But this is against convention. Like, this shouldn't happen. You shouldn't do Krugs wrapped to second rotation. Spend 20,000 years under the sea on the bottom side such that you can die. Respawn, take red and the Krugs are up again. That's 2 minutes, 15 seconds. You died for it. <laughs> it makes no sense. But in this case, it'll work out. She will get the crux. So I apologize there. But it, it shouldn't be the thing, right? And even if it was, you've taken this now. Maybe taken this. You've based. You come straight back down to this. You can't contest this anyway, in theory. Like, if she comes with Nico and the bottom lane, like, you don't have a Jinx. You don't have uh, your mid laner. You, you might not even be able to get this scuttle. So it's less of an issue for us. We just get the good counter juggling done, right? Now... That being said, because of the Shivana's weirdness, she's able to come down to the bottom side here and get that. We're able to snack that away from her. She once more shows up. See, outside and rule, nice and strong. Shows up in the vision. The fight here is going on. Kane now does have six here. Obviously, we have flash, but we're a little late to the rotation. But we should be able to get some really good orbs here. We're focusing on the Ash. 
Um, really trying to get the kill with our ultimate, which we're able to do. Now we're sitting in the Shivana's E. We will die from this. Uh, mechanics of the fight aside. Uh, I, I just, like, we see the Shivana here, but again, look look at the lane. This is twice as has happened. Look where they are. So if you're on gold platinum, look at where they are right now. Okay, they're here. Okay, you've got a nice cut up. Your bot lane is here. What do you see on screen? One, two, well, you don't see because of the, there, three, right? One, two, three, versus one. Can we do something about this? Why are we running away? Begin fighting already. Start chunking her already. Because you can see the thresh is coming. You can see the ashes arriving. Start chunking. Start fighting before. Now the Shivana's taking no damage. And even then, if you're not going to fight her as you see her move up, you should already be on the Blitzcrank killing the Blitzcrank, right? You could have queued this wall already. And you're on the Blitzcrank. Sorry, on the thresh. So the Thresh is dead, as Shivana arrives now it's a much easier focal point for your team, you come out and you win it. So again, sees the fight, backs away even though he's numbers advantage, and now is late to the rotation, coin flips the fight, and Shivana's able to get out ahead of it. Because this this Thresh should be dead. And now we're all just going to turn and kill the Shivana, right? Like we're just going to turn and kill the Shivana because the Ash is tough to stick to. But now we're wasting so much time chasing this Thresh, right? Instead of killing the Shivana who now should be starting to die already, and of course you can swap to the Ash as necessary. Just missed opportunities, right? So our CSPM goes down because of the waste of time and the lack of optimization. The Shivana is, you know, not exactly that far <laughs> uh, behind in, again, having the same issues. And the K now has a slow form, slow KDA, slow farm, and uh, I'm glad she goes back to base and doesn't greed for that, huh? <laughs> that, that Ash arrow. Sorry, that Jinx ult, rather. Global onto the Dragon, for some reason. He's basically now in a bit of a rough situation. Because his ult will be off cooldown way later than Shivana's. And Shivana knows, hey, that Dragon's going to be available for me as Ash Hook, uh, Hawk Shot does hit. So, my mouse will go to the top side as Shivana here. We were seen, so we know, and focus on that Herald. And now, he can really do nothing about it because... Volibear is rotating down. No point going, no point going, and that's why, in this case, Raptor's up, I don't like it. Krugs, this way, cut down and take this away from her, if you pres if you think she's doing this. And you know because the Jinx shoots her ult, so you know no one's there, and you know there's no camps here. So most people in this MMR are driven by the very, uh, most people in this MMR are just absolutely driven by the amount of camps they have on each side. Hey, I got blue and grump and wolves, I got this, uh, you know, this Herald. Um, that's fun. I'm gonna go top side. Yes, that's all I think about. I don't think about anything else. I mean, it's a, it's a there's a strong logic to it, right? But uh, usually, good junglers are not stuck in those weird situations where you're trading all of this stuff. Now, he would love to go for this, but of course, the Nico is just moving. And with the Shivana going straight for this as well, so that's like fantastic cutout by the Shivana. But again, I feel like the Kane had her in rough situations. Form actually not that delayed, but he had her in a really good spot a few times and just chose not to pull the trigger on it. And now she's going to start to get that farming cadence up. And now look at him. Now look at him. What are we doing? Where are we going? Killing, he saw the fight. Like, we're looking at him, but... What's this? Like, this is on your F keys. Like, why is the Thresh solo going for? This is not something a jungler rotates to. You're on this already, cutting for this. Like, he's just sitting around way too much. She doesn't have ult at this point. We do have Kane W that we could use if we... Oh, well, you got to hit it. I mean, it's better if you have Smite to use it so you can hit it. Like, use your setup, your slows, to guarantee the W. You're going to get R in a second, so you better hope you kill her. There you go. Uh, now, obviously, Nick will, Nico will be coming from base. We have the Ash on the bottom side. The Thresh will be up as well. Let's crank and uh, Jinx are back in the base. We really need to talk about map control, right? And being able to contort the map to our own reality, like playing around the roams of your supports, forcing your support to roam, giving your support the opportunity to roam, right? And obviously it doesn't always happen, but we know Blitzcranks do like to roam, so... Well, run it down in this guy's case. Uh, I, I don't know why there's pings here. We don't have alter anything to kill the Volibear. He's level 10, the Gwen is level 10. Uh, gold amount, pretty equal. He's 400 gold ahead. You could try. You could try something, but again, like, if, if you don't know where the Shivana is at all and you just want to snowball the bot lane, then fine. But at the end of the day, there's 11 kills in this game, and you are 1 1 1, whereas the Shivana is 420 nice. And all that means to me is either you're just not looking for those ganks enough, or you're having these fight scenarios where you're just not committing early enough when you could, and you're getting killed or thrown out of them. 
And then of course you wander around thinking I should do something next. I really have low KP. So you stop farming. And yeah, that's basically just compounds worse and worse and worse and worse. So you get to the 40 minute stage here. You're equal in gold. And you know, you're one, one, two. <laughs> low KP. Farm is, is not amazing and you're not where you should be. And so your carry potential goes down inherently, right? That's always the problem. So now we do a little bit of counter jungling, but it seems like it's a bit random. Uh, Ash arrow across the map. No vision control, really. Like, we have a control. We should probably go slap this control ward here because we know Shivana, after we bot side 10 years, is probably going to be looking to do something top lane. And um, there's no real jungle denial or tracking going on. And that's the biggest thing we talk about in the Discord for the Gold Plat members and the Gold Plat courses. You know, where is your sense of jungle denial? You've got to start to think like that. And that's why I opened. Uh, we see the pet with the scanner, um, well, we see the pet, but the scanner will reveal all. Uh, we obviously have ult available here, but we're stunned taking 10,000 damage. We do have the Gore Drinker active for some healing. We're able to come out and extricate and kill the bear. Do we have one more W, please? One more W. Can I order one more W if necessary? Uh, he doesn't want to use it. He's forced to flash. I don't know. We could have just used the W and the wall and not had to flash, but hey, it do be that way. So now, where are you going? She came from the side. Push this. Push, 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 push. We got two people bot lane. Nico's still mid lane. She's not a minion at this stage. We can see this answer right that's a dead mid lane turret let's kill this that's a decent turnaround for this cane right that was nice we can see what you can do when you're red cane but we don't take this and now she takes this in tps but if it was us there if it was us with them probably get this down and run away and even if you know she tps and kills you have e so you can just go <laughs> and now you can bounce for the dragon i know why he's basing for dragon i know it but you have to look at your bot lane and you have to look at your mid lane you know, are they in position to even do anything about it? And obviously here, if we get this, which we do, we should be able to base and get here in time. That's okay, we should. And then we'll be synced up with the bot lane nicely. And obviously if they overcommit, then we can go straight to it. Shivana in the meantime is going for the Herald. She's trading. She's actually straight up trading uh, the dragon for the Herald, which I think is a mistake. Uh, you know, you want both ideally, but yeah, the, the Herald had time, right? And the mountain dragon's really good. Oh, oh, Kane, I can <laughs> you know, we talk about, like, the, the quick rotations to ganks and things like that, and this guy's doing the long way around <laughs> while his ADC dies. She got hooked, it's her fault, but it's still funny. But I like it, anyway. The loop into a lane gank, always liked it. Push the turret, please. Turret, turret, turret damage. We're losing that Herald as well. Uh, could see some shove here from the Shivana to activate this to another level. Let's see if she does decide to go for it. I don't think she necessarily should, because everyone's going to be resetting here. We don't know where the cane is, explicitly. Um, so you're not going to get a really good shove on that Herald. Which we don't, as you see, and that's the problem. So it's a terrible second Herald. We could have held that a bit longer. Kane crosses mid lane here, sees the Nico. Well, that's why if you had your flash, you could flash my Q. And uh, you wouldn't have to worry about this. There you go. Shivana, in the meantime. Oh, that's a hook from the gods, isn't it? But what a waste of... Uh, what a waste of the Herald, no? Here we, Here we go. The volley skin was nice. Didn't think it was going to be... I thought it would be nicer, to be honest with you. I like it, but... You know, I'm still... I still think I prefer Prestige. Um, the Dragon one. It's just like an iteration, really. It's not really that different, is it? I'm just waiting for my Mundo skin. Uh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. I got a Zyra skin this year. It's okay. The pink chroma is really cute. I like the pink chroma. It's true. This... You see a pink... Uh, Chromid, uh, Zyra, <laughs> Jungle. <laughs> I always like that. It's quite funny. Anyway, but mostly I play the Tiffany Chroma, actually. Oh, it doesn't make it better. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I have a daughter. It's cool. So, we, uh, are now collapsing on the bottom side here. <laughs> I mean, there was like one place a hook could go to miss everything, and, and, and that's where it went. <laughs> There's also a joke there about missing everything and going where someone doesn't want it, but we won't go there either. Again, like, what are we doing? See, this is where you lose a lot of your farmers in the mid game. You're kind of just hovering instead of just pushing waves, clearing quadrants, pushing waves, clearing quadrants. That's what we want to do. There you go. See, I like this. Let's go deep with the Blitzcranker. Ward, look for traps. There we go. But again, like, we're not farming the whole time. We're just probing, looking, scouting. Their whole team, see, now it's risky because their whole team could be up. Their whole team could be up. <laughs> the whole team, like, the whole team <laughs> is there. Uh, that's nice. That's nice. Good job. Good job, Kane. Yeah, yeah. 
He ulted at the right time. Now we're collapsing with the Gwen here. Obviously, everyone's rotating over. Watch the Thresh, the Flay, the Hook, the Stun, the Ash, and uh, the the Death. Yeah. As always, they, they greed too much. I don't know. Uh, Vega's on the top side here. Jinx will want your red now. But Ash and Thresh, that's a very diseased uh, combination. Oh, please stop slowing me. I just want to move. Uh, Ash, man. Oh, nice hook again. Like, he's done a decent job, but again, you're seeing the, uh... You see it... Oof, Ash. One more? There it is. That was good. Honestly, that was good. I'm honestly, like, I'm impressed that she... She kept going, because a lot of the problems with low elo habits is they, they don't keep pushing, right? They just... They give up on plays. So we should probably save this replay as an important moment, because I'm gonna make a... A low elo uh, climbing guide, as I usually do around September, end of uh, August. Just to say, like, for the end of the season, this is how you get to gold and platinum. Um, and that's one of the biggest things, is people just don't commit as far as they really can. They just don't know the threshold. Uh, as cool as this looks, to what end is this fight existing? Why are we taking this? <laughs> By himself. With Baron up. You should lose Baron for this. Like, Nico's bottom lane, which is our biggest issue, but she has TP. Like, you should lose Baron for this. I feel like if you just fully commit to this, uh, you should be able to get it. Um, and as soon as they shop, you turn. The Shivana's not turning. The Shivana's not turning. The Shivana should be turning. You should all be turning and killing everybody because the Kane is dead. But they're not doing that, so they're not on the same page. So the Gwen's going to snip them up, and they're not going to get the Baron anyway. And now that Nico's finally rotating, instead of TPing, which he should have done in the first place... <laughs> at an aneurysm. <laughs> yeah, we agree, right? You start this up, you pull them in, you kill who shows up, the Nico TP's in, easy, 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 free Baron. Uh, everyone falls back, resets, goes down to this. Now the Kane is going to be able to get this one. I mean, Jinx, because our jungle's on the Raptors. You're seeing these things, right? Like, they make sense. And again, people are like, well, you know, what's the magic juice? There's no magic juice. It's just looking at the map in a logical way, what's the next thing we want to accomplish? Um, also, I don't know why you would flash Q. Uh, it's better to flash W because your W is going to guaranteed hit and they're going to flash to the edge of it, which means you can then smite, gap close with your Q again, and they will die. But at the same time, it's an ego, so she's going to root you. You're not Shadow Assassin. That's your downside here. <sighs> I'm honestly, if I'm smurfing, like if, if we're going to go ahead and smurf it up, uh, you just play blue K most of the time if you're good enough because... You know, you can kill the Nico, you can kill the Ash very, very easily. And you have enough damage poke to deal with the Shivana, as long as you understand your entry points. But Rost is the overall better champion, right? Like, he's better for the team, it makes more sense. But you have less 1v9 carry potential in these kinds of situations. But I love both. But honestly, if someone... Like, my channel's first organic 10,000k... 10,000k, uh, 10, jeez, I, I wish. 10k, um... A view video organic in, in 2017 the main channel was the shadow assassin guide i just made a new account started smurfing and was like hey let me make a video on this because it's easy look how powerful it can be that's it now we have a ross on the wrong side of the map from in the wrong direction missing his w's not peeling his adc and just getting absolutely kited in this right there if you want to play like that blue king swoop de doop Multiple double, swoop de doop, multiple W. I'm gonna leave that in. Get some kills, kill the Ash. Mobility, damage, burst, avoidance of CC, extra range. You can kill while you W as well, just give you better combo. It, bigger W. Yeah. It's better. The way he's playing, Blue, Blue Kane would have been better. If you're gonna play up a proper team fight and kite back and keep your Jinx alive and peel with your W and keep the Volume and Shivana off of her, then Ross makes more sense. But he's chasing these carries and putting himself in a bad situation more often than actually peeling or disrupting like a fighter should. So, again, Ash stuns from the volley. Like, the Ash, the Thresh, and the volley are playing very well together. Very, very well. Uh, the Shivana's trying her best to disrupt, but it's not really impressing me. Are we all going for this bottom side scuttle? Is that is that what we want here? Okay. All right. <laughs> Fake arm damage is... <laughs> That's funny. Um, see, not, like he, the way he's playing, man, it's it's flanky, flanky. Coming in after fights have already started, and that's when you want. That's when you really want to be blue, Kane. You know, 
Like, if you want to disrupt, engage, and peel, then that's when you play the, the Rasty Boy. But, like, now we should be going mega flanking angles. Like, you're ulting a Thresh, which is great to get the kill. But, you got to sit in front of your ADC, man, and your Vagar. Like, you, both of them need to be protected. Protected. Be the condom for your carries. But he's not doing that. Now, Ash, Volibear just say nom 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 nom. It's a repeat of the same thing a thousand times. So it always comes down to your team fighting and your general mechanics, obviously. Now they are going for the Baron. Uh, Gwen should just give this up. Sorry. Ash should be on the other side of the wall. Gwen should kill anyone who comes on the other side of the wall. That, and that we agree. Uh, but I don't... No, see, now she should give this up. Yeah. Anyone on this side of the wall, kill. Don't die trying to steal it. You're not the jungler. Catch this wave and decompress it. Catch this wave and decompress it. Take all your camps. Like, the only thing you can do here as the red team without your jungler is push the map up as far as possible. All lanes, take all camps, deny counter jungling, give them a lot to do with the Baron. Make them work for this, right? Don't waste time here with all of this pushing in, then you're making it too easy. You'll see what I mean. Because the Gwen dies as well, Blitzcrank is now low, watch this, okay? Now they have to deal the waves. Now it gets pushed in really easily. Now they have vision line to go for this dragon, right? Now Kane is going to try and steal it, which again, no point. Like, there's no point for this. Just push and control, push and control, push and control. You dying here is no point. So a lot of gold junglers, you guys actually do a really good job in certain phases of the game, but you don't do a good job in every phase of the game. Or there's a gross misunderstanding in the early game or the late game. Mid game here was solid, man. But the late game, which is dying, no reason. Our team fighting is terrible. Our target selection is not good. And then the early game, there was just no sense of, um, I was going to say morality, I guess. There's no sense of, uh, of what I should be doing. That's what we, <laughs> I love it. We always like watching an Ash die. I mean, we all hate Vega, but we love watching Ash die. See, now everyone's going and chasing the Thresh here, which is fine. We're fortunate that he walked this way, but he could have tried to go more to the Nico. And of course, when you focus too much on that, you get a problem. That's not a real Nico. She's a minion, because you can count the minions. You can count the minions and press tab. You press tab right now, she won't be a question mark. Because she's in vision. So you know she's a minion. You know it. Categorically. Uh, Shivana, in the meantime, should be pushing this up hard as hell. Isn't. Volibear is. So we need to exert pressure on this as the Shivana, not take blue. We should be pushing this. Because they're all going to the bear. So now you take bottom in him. Okay, while your AD carry is dead. They're going to kill your bear. You're at least going to get this. You push away. Now you take all of this. Hex tech out portal. Reset. And together, you end as five. You follow? That's it. Right. In the meantime... In the meantime, she does actually stay here to make picks. Let's just watch the setup for that. She does stay here with the Nico. Make picks. But you've got three of your teammates dead and the whole enemy team is alive. So again, what's the numbers advantage? If she knows on the outside. Numbers advantage. What do you actually... You have numbers advantage, yay or nay. That's it. No, we have three, they have five. Then don't take the fight. I mean, I, I can see she's winning, right? But if everyone rotates, do you win? No. Now you're dead with the Nico, which means they have three and your team has three. So if your team plays it better, they're going to counter push. And now you have their open base, but you can't do anything about it because it's a 3v3. Ross can go ahead and take whatever he needs to, to get a little bit more fed. Obviously, he's really far behind at this stage. Yep, now you just wait and you wait and you wait and you wait for everyone to respawn. Gwen goes back to base. We see the Nico here, okay? You should see this. We see the Nico here, which means she has TP, all right? The Thresh goes in on the Blitzcrank, doesn't pull the trigger, which is good because, again, Nico has the TP. Jinx is on the bottom side. This is the problem. We need to coalesce now. It's going to come down to one fight. Close game. Close game. Sometimes it ha does come down to one fight. Really does. Let's see what we got. Hook misses, which is great. Flay hits, alters burn. Fantastic. Crucial cooldowns. Let's hook him in. The Ash all goes through, but we pause it here. In the middle of the fight, we have the Event Horizon separating, which means no one else can go in. This jungler, for some reason, is here. This is the big problem. You should be trailing your team at this stage. Nico is not TPing as well. Ross isn't even in the fight either. So, they kill the Thresh because he's out of position. Exactly what you want to do. Now we get resets on everybody. The Gwen, the Jinx. Well, not resets on the Gwen, but she can chase you. Now Shabana's flanking. Nico isn't looking to TP, but they're doing the right thing, right? Four people, two people, one person. Yes? So the four people just have to choose one or choose two, and they have the numbers advantage. Kane is also trailing. So if we all turn on the Shabana now, we can kill her. If we all turn on the Shabana, we can kill her. Gwen sees it. Kane sees it. 
Blistering sees it. The whole team sees it. Beautiful, terrible flank by the Shivana. Now Valibre goes in to try and help so they can just attack the shit in front of them. Beautifully done. Resets on the Jinx. Hits the zap onto the Ash. Now, one more explosion. Plus an ult gets a kill. Nika goes in from the uh, eventual TP, but she dies. And the red team, I believe, just won this game. <laughs> Presses up again. Boom. Beautiful. There it, there it is, my friends. There it is. What a beautiful, total, and ultimate look at gold jungling. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Join me in Vokaido GG and access the courses to take it to the next level. We do have the best climbing success rate in that private Discord, which you get access to as well. Weekly content, challenger streams. See you all there.